Hey everyone, this is Luca and welcome to another episode of The Buster Monkey. This is the piece for this week and uh, I'm sorry if it took longer than expected but I've had a crazy week at work. Uh, but I mean, here it is. So I hope you like it, I hope you enjoy it. Um, thanks a lot for your support. But first of all I wanna um, say just as introduction that on top of this painting you will see a smaller version of the painting. I'm not crazy painting twice the same thing, it's just a color key that I did previously to help myself going through the painting and go a little bit faster. For the people who don't know what a color key is, it's basically a very fast version of your painting uh, where you wanna nail down the composition and the color and the values just to understand before you're gonna spend hours painting the final version just if what you're gonna see, what you're gonna do, it's cool or not, pretty much. So once I've done the quick color key, I've jumped into the painting and uh, well, I don't wanna make you wait longer, so let's go. As always, I mean as often, I start from the outline, uh, outlining, trying to be precise. In Photoshop I know it's, it's a pain to uh, trace straight lines, but anyway, uh, I took uh, the right time to have it super clean trying to nail down the design for the statues and where the water had to go and dividing everything in layers so I had a layer for the wall, layer for the, the floor, layer for the statues and so on and so on and uh, that's the part that where, you, where you spend more time but I wanted to have control and I actually didn't know how far with the detail I wanted to go but then I had to call it done otherwise you can really go on forever on a painting sometimes you have to stop yourself and I had uh, I had what I needed to, to have I, I tried to stay graphic and uh, at the same time uh, uh, clean and readable but having uh, again as always as I always say a strong light and uh, a realistic environment let's say even if you're going to check uh, the shapes of the things, they are all designed and stylized and simplified in a way. But anyway, uh, I'm going on with the selection, the selection tool, very easy just to define the shapes and the um, faces of this wall. Uh, it's a huge wall that I, I try to break down in a few um, separations, let's say, um, so it's not completely straight, I didn't want that. The lines that I add here and there are just to make some um, some detail and to make it look more uh, more complex and bigger, a bigger space. Of course the characters will tell the size of everything at the end, uh, I hope so at least. And um, But so far I'm just focusing on uh, rendering the surfaces, the material and the light, how it works in that particular space. I had a bit of a challenge here on this shadow just because uh, it didn't work exactly as it was working on the color key just because in the color key was a quick sketch and um, seeing it in super small it works but when you see it bigger uh, it might not work and you, wanna, might, you might want to change the, um, the shape of it. I keep going with the shadow, having fun with the shadows. Uh, I did it, uh, as you can tell, this is important maybe. Uh, I, I keep working with the ink on 50% on top of everything and sometimes I go on and off with the layer just to check the, the separation between the elements uh, is clear, is clear enough. For the water that's the last part that I go to render, pretty much the last part uh, on this first step just because uh, it's going to produce lots of haze and um, cloudy shapes that are going to hide few parts of the painting probably and uh, at that time I didn't know what I wanted to uh, hide specifically so I needed to render a strong base first just because I can control where to put the smoke, the, the, the haze and the atmosphere and where to keep it cleaner. Here's the very first waterfall that I did in the painting um, and uh, yeah, for that kind of, for the smoke, that haze, I used a soft brush um, lasso tool and then a smudge tool using a soft brush at, at, attached to it just to pull the edges around and uh, give that smooth, soft effect, hopefully. And then I wasn't sure how to render, let's say, the, the trees on the on the bottom right but then I started to put something and then I, as you can see I went back just to define more the shapes and then I went back there I'm jumping all around at this stage just to um, complete 
resolve problems that can affect more than one thing. In this case, I'm working on the statues that, again, were not uh, as easy as they were in the in the color key, but at the same time, uh, they were fun. I mean, it was a fun challenge. I wanted to define the, um, the volumes and the surfaces very clearly. Even just being graphic, if you're gonna see, see it closer, they're not very precise, and uh, I didn't need that. Uh, I needed a look um, that that looks something that looks cool even in small and looks clear. That was the the point for this painting. Uh, a little bit of color balance just to add more color. I was way too um, uh, washed out in terms of palette. Adding some trees, some um, to make it more rich because at this stage I was like, hey, I don't want to actually paint where I'm not gonna see. So let's start to create some trees and some foreground. And uh, as you can see, the layers are going to be way more um, than expected. <laughs> the painting at this stage is pretty much done. I'm just working on some uh, bouncing lights, uh, some uh, shadows, uh, cleaning some areas, and adding some graphics that I did on um, Illustrator. So those are vector graphics. Uh, that I had fun to, to do um, with some, uh, let's call like sci-fi logos that I'm gonna put in my series Eclipse, so stay tuned for that. Uh, working more on the waterfall, as you can see the characters are not there yet. They're gonna be the very last thing that I do. That bloom of light to make the right side warmer and uh, happier with that green and, uh, and that yellow on the floor, it was really fun. I've added a little foreground on the left too, just to complete the, um, the frame, just to frame it better, let's say. And uh, I really needed something on the left because I, I feel like I painted way too, too wide. And here's the final piece. I really hope you like it. Uh, and please let me know if there's anything that I missed. There's something that you see me doing, but I'm not explaining what I'm doing. So please let me know in a comment below or in any other social media that I have. And thanks a lot for the support as always. Next time I'm gonna try to do something more like the previous video, like black and white thumbnails, uh, which, which are really, really fun for my project Eclipse. Uh, or even some just color stuff. Why, why black and white can be that style, and uh, but in color. And uh, the next, next time I wanted to um, introduce some more matte painting look on my, um, on my painting. So I don't know yet what I'm gonna do but something more for the real. Make sure to click the like button if you, if you like what I do and to subscribe if you aren't yet. Uh, share this video with your friends if you think they're interested. And um, thanks a lot for the support again. Uh, you're awesome and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.